What's going on plugins welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to talk about the top 10 transfers you should watch this college basketball season before we get into this video make sure you drop a like and if you're new here sub to the channel and become a part of the family now let's get into the video the first player I'm going to talk about is Hunter Dickinson who transferred from Michigan to Kansas the 7-1 center was the best player available in the transfer portal and he'll be in the perfect situation at Kansas a lot of talented bigs have came from Kansas Bill Sup loves coaching bigs with Hunter's skill set he will have him playing as one of the best bigs in the country this season Hunter can score in the post and he can knock down threes. Last season he shot 42% from three. Having a center who has range like that is rare and in this offense with a lot of talented guards, he should be able to get easy looks from three. Dewan Harris and Hunter could be one of the best point guard big man duos Bill Self ever had. Dewan Harris is a pass first point guard and Hunter will make his job easy to pass and score. The pick and roll with these two will be deadly. I expect him to be the leading scorer. He averaged 18.5 points per game at Michigan. Don't be surprised he's averaging over 20 points per game for Kansas. Max Aismas was a standout star at Oral Roberts. He's one of the best scorers in college basketball right now. He has over 2,500 career points, 423 pointers while shooting 39% from three. He's using his extra year and transferring to Texas. He's from Dallas, Texas, so he's excited to come back home and play. This is big for his development to play for a bigger program. Texas needs a player like him because they lost a lot of key recruits in the 2023 recruiting class. Ron Holland ended up going to the G League, and AJ Johnson ended up going to Australia to play for the NBL. Losing two talented players like that is a big loss, but since this happened, this gives Max the opportunity to be the focal point of the offense. Last season, he averaged 21.9 points per game. He could average the same amount of points per game since Texas will be counting on the score. The only problem he's going to have is on defense. That's the weakest part of his game. He struggled guarding bigger guards, and now he's going to be playing in the Big 12 where the guards are going to be more talented and bigger. He just needs to be decent on defense and elite on offense. Texas can't count him to be an elite two-way player. He's undersized being six foot. They were in desperate need of a point guard and a scorer, and they got one in him, so hopefully he'll have a great season for Texas. Carol Love had an up and down career at UNC. He carried them to the national title game two years ago, but this past season he struggled with his shot selection and decision making. He was shooting 38% from the field and 30% from three. Last season was so bad for him that most UNC fans were begging for him to transfer, so it got to the point in overturn for him and he ended up transferring to Arizona. Also, superstar point guard Ellie Cadeau reclassified to play for UNC this season, which is going to be the player that's going to replace him, so it looks like they're moving forward. Carol Love will be able to get a fresh start and get back to his old self. He has the talent to bounce back. He's a good shot maker with toughness. He just needs to get his confidence back. Arizona already has a solid backcourt, so he's going to have to fit in and be able to play off the ball a lot. He won't have the ball in his hands as much like he did at UNC. Caleb Love can't afford to have another bad season. Right now, people are counting him out. He needs to be locked in and prove the doubters wrong at Arizona. Tremont Mark transferred from Houston to Arkansas. The 6'5 guard will be a nice score for them. Last season for Houston, he averaged 10.1 points per game. He's an elite shot creator, and he can create for others. Eric Musselman plans on giving him a big role. He loves what he can do on defense. If you want to get on the court for Eric Musselman, you have to be able to play defense, so Tremont Mark already checks that box. This will help him get into the starting lineup since he fits what Eric Musselman likes. Arkansas has a deep roster like they did last year, so there's no guarantee he will start, but either way, he have a big impact on this team. Trey Mitchell transferred from West Virginia, and he will be playing for Kentucky. He will have the chance to get a lot of minutes and maybe become a starter. Kentucky has some injured bigs, so if he's not healthy and Savitamir, who's a player they got from overseas, is not ready to play, expect Trey Mitchell to be a starter. Out of all the players I'll be talking about in this video, Trey Mitchell might be on the best team. Kentucky's roster on paper looks loaded, and they could make a deep run in March. Trey Mitchell will be a key piece for them. He's a nice veteran to have who can make shots on the perimeter and he can get rebounds. He showed off his skill set in Global Jam. He showed a lot of promise. Aaron Estrada transferred from Hostra, and he will be playing for Alabama. He earned CAA Player of the Year back-to-back -back years. Last season, he averaged 20.2 points per game. He could go from leading a mid-major program in scoring to also leading a top 25 team in scoring. He's an elite three-level scorer, and he's crafty with the ball in his hands, and he's a shifty player. He's one of those players who can just get a bucket from anywhere on the court. Alabama needs a player like this. It's high expectations for him to be a scorer. They lost Brandon Miller to the 2023 NBA Draft, so Aaron replace the reduction that Brandon Miller gave him. It's going to be an interesting season for Aaron Estrada. I think he's going to put up some crazy stats. Walter Clayton Jr. played for Rick Pitino last season, and he will be transferring to Florida. He almost followed him to St. John's. He really wanted to keep playing for Rick Pitino. He said it was hard leaving Iona and the coaches behind. He said he still communicates with the coaches and players, and they're like family. He gave praises to Rick Pitino, saying he was a big part of his development. The 6-2 combo guard is an elite scorer, and he has a great feel for the game, and he will make his teammates better. He should have a key role for Florida. Last season, he averaged 16.8 points 
points, 4.3 rebounds, 3.2 assists, and he shot 43% from three. He's an elite three-point scorer, so I expect him to light it up from three this season. Florida has not had a point guard shoot better than 40% from three since 2009. Ray J. Dennis had a career season at Toledo. He was the MAC player of the year, and he led his team to a MAC championship. He averaged 19.5 points per game and 5.8 assists, and now he'll be playing for Baylor this season. They lost three starters, so he has a chance to get into the star lineup. He's already getting praise from his new teammates. One of his teammates said that he's somebody everybody likes and gravitates to. So the team chemistry is looking good. He's described to have an old man's game. He's a good player in the post. He can either back you down or spin in either direction for a jump shot. He plays fast with the ball in his hands and he pushes the ball up the court. So Baylor's offense may be a little bit up tempo this season if he's running the show. He can read the floor well and find open shooters. Toledo had the second best three point shooting team percentage in the country last season. He has the ability to get the finish the key on him, which helps him get open looks for his teammates. Some people are sleeping on him, but he was a steal in a transfer portal. Cam Spencer will be transferred from Rutgers to UConn. Last season, he averaged 13.2 points and 3.0 assists per game, and he shot 43% from three. He was one of the best three-point shooters in the country. UConn still has a solid team, and their 2023 recruiting class is loaded with talent. And now they get a veteran player like Cam Spencer, who's a sniper from three. UConn lost their best three-point shooter, so they have a major hole to fill, so they're hoping Cam Spencer can make an impact from three. And the last player I'm going to talk about is Ace Baldwin, who's transferred from VCU to Penn State. He followed his head coach from VCU, who will be coaching at Penn State. At first, he was upset that Mike Rose was leaving, but then he pitched the idea about him joining him at Penn State. Either way, it was going to be a huge change. He could have stayed at VCU without his coach or go to a new program. He did give a statement saying he didn't want to leave and he was hurt because he played for the program for three years and he loved playing there. But he wanted to stay loyal to his coach and that's why he decided to leave VCU. Last season, he averaged 12.7 points per game, 5.8 assists, and 2.2 steals. He's a two-way player, but he'll make a big impact for Penn State with his defense. He was the conference player of the year and defensive player of the year. He led the team in scoring, assists, and steals. He was ranked in the top 20 players nationally and assists and steals, so Penn State's getting a solid player. Penn State's in a rebuild, and he will most likely be the best player on the team. Since he has his coach from VCU, he should be able to get solid minutes. One player that I didn't put on my list that could have a big impact this season is Javon Quinterly. He's a graduate transfer. He left Alabama and will be playing for Memphis. He won't need a waiver, which is a good thing. He's going to be able to play right away. He has struggled a little bit in his college career, and he has some injuries. He tore his ACL in 2022. Last season for Alabama, he averaged 8.7 points per game and 3.6 assists. Those stats are not that good, but he did come off the bench most of the season. But for Memphis, he has a chance to be a starter and get his basketball career back on track. So he might shock everyone and have a great season. Which transfer on my list you think will have the best season for their new team? If it's a player I didn't name, drop their name in the comments, drop a like on the video, and sub to the channel, turn on post notifications so you know when I post. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see you in the next video. Till next time.